Hello everyone, welcome to episode 9 of our remaking Pong in the Unreal Engine series for beginners. Uh, last episode we set up a main menu now, so now we have a menu that loads up and we can start the game from here. Which is just perfect. Uh, we just need to set up a couple of things. Firstly we need to uh, set up so that when we start the game that's what it comes up as. Uh, and then we'll move on to today's topic, which is setting up our winning scenario. And we'll also look into creating a game instance uh, so we can bring variables across from one map to another. Uh, hopefully, uh, this is the second to last episode of the series. After the next one where we do saving and loading, we should be all good to go and be able to call it a final product. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go into the edit menu and we're going to drop down to project settings. And in project settings on the left hand side you have maps and modes. There it is. And what we want to do is the game default map here. We want to change this to menu map. And editor startup we can change to whatever we'd like as well. Uh, we shouldn't need to change it to menu map. We can change it to pong level so that when we load up the, uh, the project from now on it should come straight into the Pong level itself. So, this way of testing this is if we open up and go standalone game, it should open up as a menu, which it has. So you can go start game from here, and it opens up our game that we have created. So today, like I said, we're going to add a couple of things. So the first thing we're going to do is going to open up our menu UMG and go over to the designer. So we want the statistics button to actually do something. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a get a border from the left, drag it out, and we're going to change the tint of the brush color. And we're going to put it down to black or near black, and we're going to put it down to 0.1-ish. So you can't see it in here, but what you'll notice is in the actual game itself, let's change this back to the new editor window, you do have a box there. You're going to make sure it's anchored to the left, so it's stuck to the middle here, the same as the menu. And what we're going to do in there is we're going to get a vertical box. And in that vertical box, we're going to get a horizontal box. And in that horizontal box, we're going to add two text items. First one we're going to call total games played and with the space at the end to the block out here and we'll leave the text box for now and we're going to give it an outline of two pixels. We're going to change the font to our video game font. I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side as well. If you need to resize the box, do so. But uh, obviously, that's what we're going to have. We're going to rename the horizontal box total. And then we're going to duplicate it twice. One for games one. And one for games lost. Change the text in the left side. We won't be able to change the ones on the right for now. So we compile and save. And what you'll notice is it will always be there and the statistic button does nothing. So what we're going to do is going to wrap this up in a widget switcher. So we're going to rename the vertical box stats box. And we're going to Right click, we're going to wrap with a widget switcher, which we're going to call options box. Well, and save, and we're going to add a vertical box, two options box again, 
and drag that right above stats box. So by default, we have it as a blank canvas. Now, if you click the statistics button and find the green plus down here, we can grab the options box, drag off there and go set active widget index to one because zero is the first one, which is the blank canvas. Well, and save. So now if we open it up and click statistics, it's there. So now we need to think about how we're going to get the information from the game to that stats box. And the way to do that is by using a game instance class, which is variables and information stored and shared between levels. So because we are moving from the menu map to the pong map to the menu map and so on and so on, this is where we are going to add the information. So if we right click on our content drawer and blueprint class, we will need to expand down the bottom and type in game instance. And here I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to just call it pong gi. And we'll open that up. If you go to your project settings now, or edit project settings if you haven't done it already, and go back to your maps and modes, at the bottom here you have a game instance class which is shared between your whole game. Make sure you select Pong GI, otherwise nothing from this point will work. So now we need to have a statistics uh, panel and we need to, a way of storing that information. So we're going to put it all into a strut. So if we go blueprint and create a new strut, we call it statistics underscore struct and open it up. We're going to have three variables. We're going to have total games played. We're going to have total games one. And we're going to have total games lost, all of which are integers. Save. So back in your game instance now, you want to open up a variable. You want to call it statistics and give it the statistics struct. Compile and save. What we're also going to use a game instance for is we're going to change how many goals are required to win. So we're going to add a variable. We're just going to call it winning score. And we're going to give it an integer variable. And we're going to set the default to three for now. Well, and save. You can close your game instance now. So what we can do next is we can actually set up these texts now. So in order to do that, we need to get an access to the game instance variables. So what we need to do is in the graph, we need to use the on begin play equivalent of for a widget, which is the event construct. We want to get game instance, use the game version, not the widget version, cast to long GI. And right click, promote to variable, file, and save. So now, if you go into the designer and click the, the text block, under binding for text, where it automatically changes what the text says based on a variable or based on a function, you can bind as point GI statistics to the games played. And if the game is won, GI stats games won. And for lost, bind GI stats lost. Well, and save. So if we load up the game now and open up stats, we'll see they all say zero. When we start the game, before we open up the level, we want to add to our total games played. So what we want to do is we want to go as Pong GI, we want to get statistics, we want to break and we want to set members 
going to drag off the total games played and we want to increment it by just hitting the plus sign twice. And we want to select total games played and drag pin to pin and then open the level. Perfect. We're going to be doing something very similar for the games won and games lost, which we will do now. But as you can see, stats zero. And when we start the game, if I just before do that, if I break this, I can print so the game played and it should come up with one. Which it does. So now we're going to need to go into our Pong level because we're going to have to do some work on here. So we're going to need to open up our Pong game mode and we're going to create a custom event in here uh, which was going to check to see if it's game over or not. But before we do that, we need to go to the begin play and exactly the same as what we've done in the UMG. We can copy and paste this and just drop it there. Right click on the set and create variable, otherwise you'll get an error. File and save. So what we can do is we can custom event, check for game over and what we want to do is we want to see get into the player score higher or equal to or greater than or equal to the winning score because if it is then we want to do game one, and if it's not, then we want to check if the enemy score is higher than the winning score, in which case we want to do game lost. The reason why we're not using a select node here is because we want to do different things based on the true or false, not just a different value. So what we can do now is very similar to how we've got the trying to find the right one. It's very similar to how we got this. We can, in fact, we can copy and paste. Hold Control to move a node. So again, one, and we're going to do exactly the same thing, but for lost. Sure, all the nodes are connected to the trues, and we want to open level by name. Double check the name, it is menu map, which is case sensitive. Make sure all the nodes are connected, compile, and save. Now, if we go into the ball, which is where we have all our collisions, we can do on goal. It's going to obviously play the goal. So we want to, before it destroys the actor, otherwise this won't work. So you have to move that up here. We want to get the game mode. So we need to, on the begin play, get the game mode. And cast to Pong GM and promote that as a variable which we can then change down here.
to just the node instead. We want to, as the game mode, check for game over, and we want to do it on both. So now, if it's, it's going to add to the score, it's going to check if it's game over, and if it's right, it's going to add our stat. If not, it's going to carry on. So if we let this go, uh, if I open up the menu map even, save everything, and then we play, so zero, 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 we start the game. Two and three, I've lost. If I go to statistics, it says one played, one lost. Now we're going to just try and win a game. In a, in a special episode at the end, we will fix these bugs. There we go. Uh, go to C60, it says two, one, and one. Fantastic. And there you have it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit that like button and subscribe and share. Uh, if you have any other questions, join my Discord. The link will be in the description as always. Um, but uh, the next episode will be the last in the full series where we look at saving and loading. Uh, and then after that, we'll get to look at the bugs and hoping, making sure we can get everything sorted out that we've had for a while now. Uh, I might also do a couple of alternate ways of doing things as well. We'll take a look to see this how, uh, but I shall move on as we go. Uh, thank you very much guys, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.